Okay, so I just thought I would um, you know, drop back in. I don't know if there's necessarily new people that watch this video. Um, if you are new, and I do have a page called Life Drawings with Joseph Smith, where you can see in compare and see how different the artist depictions of Joseph Smith were even six months before the forward facing painting was done by David Rogers in September 1842 and it may or may not have been altered by Joseph Smith III so someone was like trying to school me on how I think that painting is accurate and that's assuming you think it's so accurate and, da -da -da, and I just kind of uh, you didn't watch my videos from two years ago so two years ago I did talk for over an hour and then another hour and just I just kept making videos that's sort of been my focus a lot, talking about how different the forward facing painting is from the death mask, but then, you know, finding out that it was from life and it was done, you know, you can just look here and see this mozzie. This is June 1842. So he didn't have teased bouffant hair in June 1842. Why would he suddenly have a care and no receding hairline when he had one in September? in June and not have it in September unless he's wearing a hairpiece as possible, things like that. So I, I definitely know it's not that good. I've talked a lot about it. You can go to the main page, but it is, is, I'm just showing you, it's just scroll down. You can see, oh, there's a forward facing paint. There's no receding hairline on the sides. There's so many things that are just different, but this is the profile apparently done by David Rogers where the hairline, um, you can see the hair follicles coming out of his head and then it just sort of turns into like bangs where it's just sitting on the top of his head brush forward. So if you just took a pair of scissors, you see hair coming out of his head and then it's just brushed straight and then it pops straight up and it does go up kind of high. But in the forward facing painting, it looks like a bouffant teased and as if he has no receding hairline, which just wasn't true according to several artists who from life. So you can find there's several people. Um, and this was commissioned by Joseph Smith III and it looks pretty different. But we'll, if you go here, you can find out a timeline about my photo and just descriptions of what he looked like. We, people do talk about a retreating forehead, things like that. And then if you scroll, 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 and you could do Providence, and you can see there all the history I found out about the man who printed it because it's on paper. You can find out a lot of information. And then I studied the photography of the man who did my photo, who Gowen Weaver believes he copied another person's photography, a daguerreotype is what it could be. So because it doesn't look like his background, doesn't look like his lighting's very, very even and good. And whereas the background of mine is short, um, and it, it matches the short background in Emma's picture and sort of this textured background and side lighting. But anyway, here's the timeline. Where we can see it was September 1842. Like if you click on this link, then you'll see the journal. A lot of people were just commenting all summer, you're helping me learn so much and all these things. So, beginning the summer, right? Okay. Uh, but by 1875, Junius F. Wells goes to Nauvoo. He sees the painting like once and he visits with Emma. And I did this screenshot of this like that because initially when I first made my website in 2021, it made you log in. So I thought, oh, all these people are not members of the church. Can't, they can click the link. But now I think it does actually open up. So it actually goes to it, but it used to log in and it wouldn't show this, right? But um, that's why I did that screenshot. Just so you know, this is what it says. And I just kind of kept it that way. But he went there and Emma just said it really wasn't a good likeness of him in 1875, but this is 1930, but it was 1875 when he went, and according to Junius F. Wells, she never had it copied in her lifetime, okay? By 1879, 
Emma has died and Joseph III takes photos of the painting and has it altered, probably with India ink, and Carter does the same thing in 1885, and it looks almost exactly the same. Only difference is this one, I've analyzed, the eyes are more closer together, and then you can see by August he's advertising saying it's just he's selling photos of the painting. He doesn't claim that he's selling copies of a photo, and you can click the link there and read that. By August 1885, people are saying what Carter has, which looks exactly like the 1879 copies just with the third is selling, looks the same. Anyway. But yeah, you can just read more of the details. See, there's Carter's picture again. It's white. They've, they've altered it in the almost the exact same way, right? And then 1899 is when this is con donated. It was completed before then, obviously, to the Iowa Historical Society. So it's a copy of the original 1842 painting. But in 1910, Joseph III says that he did this using the daguerreotype of his father and that the yeah and then with the daguerreotype and sustaining the character of the likeness of the father by the daguerreotype from possession but he explains that this is he's excited about this duplicate oil painting in the front of it and he wants mr ramsey to go there look at that and he's quite a bit older and he's kind of going back and forth between talking about this authentic oil painting and then I believe he's then talking about the duplicate oil painting, but who knows? Maybe he was painting over the original as well, but clearly he's saying he was using the daguerreotype. And then when you're doing duplicate oil painting, he's looking at the 1842 painting, so it's copying an old painting. And he's confused by years because he was 11 years old when the painting was done. He was a kid, he was running around outside. If you read his memoirs, he's just outside running, going to school, busy. His father's really busy, you know, but he's very involved in his life too, but um, years would be hard to remember. But and he thinks it was maybe 1843 that Lucien Foster took the daguerreotype, it would, would have been 1844. Painting would have been two years earlier. And so if you go to the bottom there, here is this video right there where I do the analysis and then to the next of it, I'm explaining why William B. McCarl thinks that the painting was done by daguerreotype, but that's been debunked. And the Joseph Smith Papers says, oh no, it was done by David Rogers. That's because when this article was written in 1960s, um, they didn't have, you know, like the Saint, they weren't necessarily reading or caring about the Saints Herald, which explains Joseph Smith III is saying his dad was 36 when it was done. Not my dad was dead and he took the daguerreotype and created the painting, right? Okay. But I, I, I very much detail in this video how different the painting is. So you scroll there, you can watch this and hear me talk about, and I show you how different it is to the death mask and it's, it's very, very different. There we go. And you can see it just doesn't, it's, it's quite different. You know, the eyebrows are really different, you guys. The width of the face, nose, very, very different. So I've been talking about that. And so that video was done in, and I did a whole video showing the death two years ago, showing. The January beginning of 2020 before the lockdown, right? And so I decided to go ahead and just kind of show you even more. If, if you are like new to the channel, here's, here's the death mask. I went ahead and just showed you this. I've just sort of sketched along just the crease in his eye when his eyes are closed, which is not 100% how his eyes will open. And he's also been um, beat up after he died, fell. You know, there's trauma on the death mask. That, that is true. But the placement of the nose, the mouth, the chin, um, all of these things. So I actually did little dots where the eyes are, then I still draw in the crease because it's important to notice that on his left eyelid, it's really heavy. There isn't a crease under the brow bone, whereas the right one, it's super deep, right? But the, the distance between the eyes is really different. 
when you look at this. And, and I've done a lot. I'm not going to go into great detail about the death mask and how well I believe it matches this picture. But the placement of the nose is correct, and the mouth and the chin. I did a little dot where the chin ends. It just is really, really good, right? And then you can see the swoop on the side. But when we, we can take that away, we keep that layer, we can then go to here and then see. Okay, there it is at full opacity. You, as I talk in the other video, the eyes are too close together in the painting, you know, but where the chin hits, sides of the mouth, there's some things the artist still, bam, 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 that line up. But there were some things that I, when I found something that matched, I, I'm going to go ahead and just show you. I'll just look at it first and then show you. So it's that. You can just kind of go back and forth. Obviously, the hairline is totally different, but if you look at the artwork, you see his hairline is really different. All the other artwork was different than this painting. So, there are definitely some similarities, but I kind of had fun looking at just the corners of the mouth. Corners of the mouth are good. Or his right eye is fine, but they basically made his eyes super straight across, like as if it's all symmetrical, right? But if you look at the death mask and the skull, the skull, you see that the left eye isn't in the same, it's not perfectly level with the other eye. And I kind of traced along the cheek there. And that actually follows the same line. So in my picture, it's actually a little bit wider. Isn't that crazy? Someone was trying to say that his face was too narrow. My guy's face was way too narrow. And just right where that hair is, where he's brushing his hair forward, right there on the left, kind of hits in the same place. But that hairstyle just doesn't look at all like what Mosley and several other people but look at the chin that's one thing that's really really important is look at the chin and see where it curves right there and take that away can I show you how I kind of did that mark right there on the painting but that's where I did that on the picture and, and that's one thing you don't see with the locket photo you don't see that chin curving and kind of coming out like that at all but it's definitely very evident in the painting whereas there's a very flat chin in the locket photo and no eyebrows and just you can look at the eyebrows I sometimes I'll put my finger where the eyebrow how wide it is how thick it is how far does it go beyond the eye it's the same distance on his right eye Okay, yeah, there was that, but then you can just, there definitely are a lot of things that are pretty, pretty different from Mosley's several, this one, and, and Mosley's own work sort of varies. And his face just looks white right there, I don't know. Whereas there's color in his face there. But there's definitely... Not very much hair on the side of the head, and you would see that in the first facing painting. So likely either they artistic liberties, or he wore a hair piece, which um, Major Biderman did when he was dating Emma. And so they had that at that time. That was just a year, a couple of years after Joseph Smith died. So it was common actually to have hair pieces. That's one theory. I don't know. Uh, but you see, this is the left side of his face. Someone did. We don't know who. They didn't sign their name, but they said it was Joseph Smith and it was 1842. And you can see this left eyebrow is very 
much. Um, not full. It's thinner. And it doesn't go beyond even the eye lid point. Whereas his right eyebrow goes, continues on and is very thick and going well beyond the corner of his eye. So his right and left eyebrows are different. Whereas in the forward facing painting, they're making it trying to make it symmetrical, trying to make the left eyebrow look like his right, but still look like him. And they made it kind of arch up kind of funny, which you sort of see in my picture actually is sort of something that's there. And here's the left side of his face. That left eyebrow just looks kind of shorter. And I don't know. And his left earlobe looks really long. And it, his left earlobe is a lot longer than his right earlobe, whereas Maudsley trying the right side of his face his right ear though looks kind of normal, whereas this one it looks pretty normal. You know, so if that was from abuse or I don't know, what would have made the ear lobe longer? Then this is from the newspaper, how the newspaper copied the photo of the painting. But you see the eye, the left eye is not at the same level. Like if you put an actual level <laughs> between the eyes, you would see the left eye is different than the right. But you only see that in the duplicate oil painting, which was based on the daguerreotype and the original. <laughs>